Rockettes, and we're kicking off the holiday gift grab today on Wendy. How are you doing? Live from New York City, it's the Wendy Williams Show. The kids have come to play today. You won't believe what I'm about to tell you. With all due respect, have several seats. My girls have always turned out. I give it to you straight, no chaser. Now, here's Wendy! Hey, girls! Yes! Hello! Oh, wow! Yeah, welcome to Monday! Thank you for watching our show. <laughs> I'm doing great. Listen, the Rockettes come here. It's like a yearly thing here at Wendy. And later on in the show, they're going to do a special performance with all them legs. Yeah. And uh, kick off our holiday gift grab. Right now, though, it's time for Hot Topics. Come on. Till Christmas, are you stressed? I am stressed. There is not one glimmer of Christmas in our home. Uh, I don't watch Christmas, the, the movies and stuff, although I did watch one over the weekend, I forgot what it was. But you know, I was telling you on account of our dog, you know, he's still a baby, he's you know, just six months old. He will pull the tree down and pull the garland, you know, and eat the poinsettias. So that's my excuse <laughs> for not putting up Christmas stuff. But happy Hanukkah. Aww. See, I like Hanukkah decorations because they're easy. You pull that menorah out of the drawer, you pop it in the window, you plug it in, and then you do the lights. You know, easy. Uh, Festivus, for my Seinfeld friends. Festivus is great. You put a pole up and that's it. Anyway, uh, Christmas is just so, just, I feel, I'm like sweating, thinking about it. By the way, um, my outfit today. Yeah. Was designed by me. Yeah. It's Wendy for HSN. And, um, you know, what you need to understand is that everything in my line is under 100 bucks, and the sizes go from extra small to 3X. And if you don't love a blouse with poetic sleeves, then maybe you're not my girl. I love, I love a blouse with a knot and a poetic sleeves. And who doesn't love sequence pants? Right? Good. Yeah. Right? And on account of if you have larger thighs and they rub together and then the sequence falls off. No, I, I look, look, look. I don't just slap my name on stuff. I actually design stuff. Now look. Inside, you'll notice that this right here. So, exactly. So the sequence, yes, yes. So when you walk, the sequence is not going to rub off. And uh, Suzanne has curled her hair. Yes. <laughs> She's wearing a beautiful dress from the Wendy collection yes. at HSN. 
I love it. I love it. I like it's very rare that you ever wear dresses. Ever, and I and I had to try on three different stockings. I put holes through the first two. <laughs> and there is a, a hole, but it's high, so you can't see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oops. What am I gonna do with her? <laughs> anyway, um, I'm gonna be at HSN with Colleen Lopez. Her show is called The List, and I'll be there on Thursday night from 9 to 11 presenting my holiday collection. Yes. Honey, I um, am so tired of people fighting on TV. I couldn't even pay full attention. And you know what I'm talking about, correct? So I had the TV on in the kitchen, but also the TV in the bedroom, and then my mom caved TV, because Sunday nights mean get prepared for the work week. So I don't have time to just sit and watch. And if it doesn't interest me, then I really don't sit and watch, but I'll have it on as background noise. Real Housewives of Atlanta last night I'm speaking of. Now, We saw a violent confrontation between, <laughs> Bet by the way, do you like this color? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Antoine, he's, he's really good. I'm not a redhead, but I love the way he did, like Antoine just did his thing on this wig, just twisting and doing. And it's heavy too, a lot of hair. That confrontation between Cynthia and Portia, first of all, made me embarrassed on account of my black, okay? Made me embarrassed on account of, aren't we all supposed to be grown women? Yes. White people and, uh, and, and Indian people and Asian, we don't all act like this, okay? But I will humor you Let's look at it. Go. You're a fake oh, bitch, girl. Your ass you've been on this boat and then cool as hell. You've been sitting on this boat, cool as hell all day. All I can do is tell you. But is this how you want to end it? But this is how you want to be. But is this how you want to be? If you don't, this is how you want it to be. But is this how you want it to be? But is this how you want it to be? Bitch, you're not to me, bitch. What? Are they fighting? What the? Oh my god! Don't put your hand in my face, bitch. She's crazy. I told y'all. She's done. I know. <laughs> okay. Okay. You realize that is some ghetto trash. Both of them. Both of them. Like, what had happened? By the way, I'm sure the security guard working for VH1 was happy. It, it, it looked like, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so, so Portia is a single woman with no children who is 34 years old. Too old to do that. Yes. Cynthia is a married woman with a daughter who is 47. Okay, I've never been in a fist fight. So never, never in my life, not when I was five, not when I was 10, not when I was three, not when I was 23. Like I've never been in a fist fight. My mouth has always been my mitts. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, <laughs> you know, you know, I will curse you out to the point I curse you in. <laughs> and I will read you with, a thes with the thesaurus but you will not get me to mess up my hands. So I really don't know that life. And I get it, a lot of people watching and a lot of people probably in our, clap if you've ever, just the women, not the men. If you've ever been in a fist fight, clap. Suzanne? It's a lot of ladies. It's a lot of ladies. I'm a little scared of this audience. 
Suzanne? Yeah. Have you ever been in a fist fight? Never. I would run before anyone came at me. <laughs> No, I, uh, I, I couldn't way. bust a grape in a fruit fight. Uh, I, like, really? I don't know. I just feel like when you have to resort, as a woman, not men, because men, you all have a whole different situation going on. You all fight all the time. But <laughs> she, she said all the time. But, you know, as a woman, I just feel like fighting is so unsexy. You know, fighting is what you do when you don't have the verbiage to to curse it out. So, dumb one, dumb two, I'm done. Yay! Dumb. Yay! Remember there was a time when Kim having a baby would have been a big deal? Yes. But now it was just something that we heard about over the weekend and then we went on. I don't know about you, I didn't even Google Schmoogle. Like, congratulations, though, to Kim and Kanye. They welcomed their second child. <laughs> and it's our celebrity shout out. Hit it. So, um, she gave birth to her baby boy on Saturday morning, three weeks before birth was supposed to be, but sometimes stuff happens. You know, like to me, three weeks before the baby is fully cooked. Yes. Like, can you take this out of me <laughs> now? <laughs> and the one thing that I identify with Kim regarding being pregnant is that it's a condition. It was not, it was not pleasurable. You know, there's a lot of water weight. She gained 50 something pounds on her five foot two frame. Um, she uh, was um, in a position where she could have gotten you know, some sort of mommy sicknesses because of carrying the baby. And so it was not pleasurable. And I totally get that. I think that women who lie about pregnancy being so pleasurable, <laughs> and, and many of you I'm sure had very pleasurable experiences, but you know, I didn't. I'll tell you that, it was the worst. <laughs> I gained 103 pounds, I'm surprised. I weighed 297 pounds oh. on the date of the boy's birth. And nobody told me that, all right, after I pushed him out and then waited until the next morning to weigh myself, I only lost four pounds. <laughs> I'm like, what, what am I going to do now? It, it was not pleasurable. I mean, you know, the pleasure is in the, in the blessing, but as far as being pregnant, please, you can have that. Anyway, so Kim and Kanye's baby, they say, still doesn't have a name. Aww. But here's my thought. <laughs> my thought is that they don't wanna release the name because giving birth on a Saturday means that People Magazine, In Touch, The Inquirer, Hot Topics, we're all off. So we can't really talk about, you know, oh my God, she gave birth. So they'll probably release the name by the end of the business day today. Yeah. So then we'll talk about it. I don't know what the big deal is over a name. Here's my thing. I was so disgusted with the whole weight gain and you know the miscarriages before having little Kev. Just the whole, I had to be on bed rest for nine months. And the only thing that distracted me was the radio station reluctantly put all the equipment in the house. So I was on the radio every morning just to take my, yeah, yeah, I'd lay there on the couch. He's baking. I'm, <laughs> I'm ha yeah, yeah, I'd lay, you know, on the couch every morning. Um, but you know, the name thing wasn't a big deal to me. I promise you this, I knew at the clearing of the EPT when it said positive, <laughs> I knew that the baby's name would be Kevin, girl or boy, I don't care. <laughs> Look. I am busy. I had two five month miscarriages. Those girls were named Kevin also. <laughs> so by the time I hit the crossroads, I'm gonna have, what, three Kevins going? Like, Kevin, Kevin, Kevin. <laughs> Here's the thing, that's my husband's name. And I wasn't that persnickety about like names and stuff like that. I know it's hard though when you're a junior because then you have to live up to the expectations of 
your dad, that's the only pressurizing thing about being a junior. Why don't you just name the baby Kanye? Mm -hmm. You know? Anyway, congratulations to both of you. Um, I, you know. Kanye is an easy enough name and it's also a very unique name so then he doesn't even have to use a last name if by chance he rises to you know, stardom the way his parents are. You know? That's when you know you've made it, when you can just be one name. Like Cher and Madonna and stuff. Like when I look on the Googler and Wendy, it's either I come up first or Wendy with the red hair who sells the burgers. <laughs> I guess I'm a hybrid of both today, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, genuinely, congratulations to Kim and Kanye. Congratulations. <laughs> and I'm not watching, because I don't care. Super Bowl halftime. You heard about it? All right, well, that's why I watch TV for you. Okay. So here's what's, uh, speaking of Super Bowl, oh, by the way, shout out to the Johnson family that owns the Jets. Got your Christmas card, and congratulations on yesterday's win. Yeah, yeah. Do you know the cheer? J-E-T-S. Yeah! Ridiculous. All right, so Coldplay is gonna be performing at the halftime of the Super Bowl. All right, well, clap if you clap if you like that. That is not a reason to watch. They are not main performers, they are side pieces to a bigger performer. <laughs> Thing. Here's my thing, you know, I'm not into sports unless sports intersects hot topics, then we talk sports here on the show. I'm not into the Super Bowl. I like the food, you know? <laughs> and I like a halftime show. I like a good halftime show, I do. But the rumor is, is that Beyonce and Bruno Mars might be joining Coldplay. So in other words, Musically, sometimes I am out of touch. I don't know a Coldplay song. I don't hear them on Elvis Duran. I have no idea. I, I just know Chris married to that woman and now they're getting a divorce and, <laughs> and they have kids named Apple and Moses. Uh, that, they're not a reason to tune in. And by the way, Super Bowl committee, Beyonce is not gonna come out and play second man to Coldplay. And by the way, Bruno Mars, you better not come out and play second man to Coldplay. Yeah. All right. <clears throat> you know, last year they had Katy Perry with Missy Elliott. Now that was a reason to watch. <laughs> the year before it was Bruno Mars and the Red Hot Chili Peppers. See, I know those people. We know them. Uh, one of my producers this morning was saying Coldplay is probably the biggest band in the world right now. Yes. Was that you, was that you boys that you, said that? It was not me. It wasn't you, no, Norman? It was not me. Jason, was that you? No, but I do like them. They've sold 80 million albums. 80, to who? <laughs> to me. <laughs> Would you like to see them be the main stars of halftime? I don't mind it. Okay, Norman? I don't want it. <laughs> Listen. Where is Taylor Swift? Can we get her on that stage? Uh, you know what? Where is Beyonce? I can watch her every year. Uh, where is Justin Bieber? And I'll give you one more example. Where is Puffy and the entire bad boy family? You know, the game is for football fans, but halftime is for all of us. So the Super Bowl, 
I know you'll be watching, it's a social event, is going to be coming on TV on February 7th on CBS. Yeah. Aretha Franklin. You know, I love you, Miss Franklin. How you doing, Detroit? <laughs> okay, so she's throwing some major shade at Adele. Well, Adele's album 25 is still breaking every record sale imaginable. Still. And Aretha said only time will tell if Adele will go down in history as one of the greats, not sales. Well, I agree with her. You know, cause you can sell all these records doesn't mean you're gonna become legend. But. The idea of Miss Franklin speaking like that is so schoolgirl, schoolyard, childish. Like, Miss Franklin, let these new singers breathe. You are the legend. You're the legend, you're worth $60 million. She sold, um, um, oh, excuse me, I'm gonna, all right, let me do a compare and contrast, okay? Um, Miss Franklin, I don't like this behavior from you, but anyway. Um, Miss Franklin has 18 Grammys, for 32 albums. Wow. Adele has 10 Grammys for two albums. <laughs> Miss Franklin sold 75 million records in her lifetime. Adele in her short lifetime has sold 40 million already. And as I said, Miss Franklin is worth $60 million and Adele is worth $75 million. I, you know, I don't even see that this is even a fight. Just Miss Franklin, sit back and be regal. Like, like sit back, be regal and understand that we understand exactly what you're saying. Adele has only been around for two albums in like five years, right? Yep. All right, doesn't mean she's gonna be a legend when she's 70 years old like Miss Franklin. Uh -huh. All right, 72. so only time will tell, but Miss Franklin, zip it. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> <laughs>